first thing first uh, that we need to understand uh, the the mechanism that how transgene animals were created and i told you in our earlier class just for a quick recap that we inject the gene of our choice which we want to incorporate into the organism at a single cell stage and that single cell stage means we inject that stuff at a it is zygote and after that we confirm it uh, and we confirm it after the after once the once the new generation is born and we have advanced that method in different ways we use a recombinant a dna technology we use viral vectors uh, which are wonderful carriers of our genes which can not only uh, which are not only able to penetrate the boundaries of the cell but they are also strong enough and also able to deliver the external gene uh, right within the nucleus so we can use viral vectors as well uh, and we have manipulated other choices as well like we use uh, sperm uh, tagged with external gene so the sperm will going to carry that stuff to the to the egg but that is not the very uh, famous or uh, adopted way uh, out there the micro injection technique which we have studied that was the most famous way of injecting an external thing at a single cell stage now that's a different question that what you are actually using you are using viral vectors or traditional plasmids so traditional plasmids are not very much efficient viral vectors are efficient so that makes the things more easier but you should understand certain troubles and drawbacks of that uh, technology i think you can you should be able to guess that thing now uh, that the inserted dna which you are sending where it will land it into the genome the human genome is a very 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 big thing it's like a it's a very very big thing a gene is nothing as compared to the size of the genome if you want to compare the size of the gene which you are sending this is something which you are sending and the size of the genome if you want to compare the, these two things it is like it is like a, a, a coin uh, versus approximately uh, the distance between lahore to islamabad so a coin is nothing as compared to the distance between lahore to islamabad so so nobody can define nobody can control where that gene will going to be inserted into the host genome uh, the host genome also contains different genes some of them are very important some of them are less important and we know about 2% of the genome carries uh, the protein coding region carry the protein coding regions means these are the regions which are contributing in creating messenger rna which are producing proteins and doing functions so luckily 98% of the genome is like an empty place or it is carrying the non protein coding genes so the high chances that the external dna will going to be incorporated within the vacant spaces between the genes but who knows that those vacant spaces might be important and might be involved in certain regulatory functions but the problem you should identify here that we don't know where the external gene will going to be incorporated it will be incorporated here or here or here or in another chromosome in another chromosome nobody knows it's a very random process the next thing is that that uh, that the eggs must be harvested you need to get this thing it's a very precious commodity precious commodity in a sense because it is not produced in numbers in high numbers in mammals it is not produced in high numbers so you have to fertilize the thing in in vivo in, sorry in vitro and then you need to inject the things more than one copy of the gene may get into the genome and that's a very very valid objection that you are sending the genes through ret retroviruses who knows that one cell is going to receive one copy of the gene or two copy of the genes three copies of the gene five copies of the genes or 100 copies of the genes who knows so nobody can control how many genes will going to be incorporated into the human genome so uh, in in one experiment the host genome incorporate for example one gene in another experiment number 2 the host genome incorporated two copies so that means 
the ex in experiment one, you will get a function or gain of function. In experiment number two, you will get twice uh, the value of the function now. So nobody can control that how many copies will be incorporated or how many, how, how much function we will going to receive. All you can do and assume that uh, each cell should be able to receive at least one copy of the external gene you are you want to incorporate. So all these things are a very big trouble. And of course, there are more troubles out there. And I want you guys to, to, to list those troubles which are associated with transgenic animal generation. And the biggest of the biggest of the trouble is efficiency. I'm just writing it and I want you guys to ponder and to, to browse and study the efficiency. The efficiency of the process make it very difficult and harder things to do. So let's start with some of the examples of the transgenes. So uh, many cattle have been created in this way. There are transgenic cattle out there, uh, especially the dairy cows. Uh, extra copies of casein casein is a is a is a protein is a protein and uh, that protein is present in the milk and casein protein actually helps uh, define the overall production of the cheese out of the milk so they have created the cow with the with the extra copy uh, of the casein genes and that produce 13% more milk proteins. So they have the, the amount of protein in the milk is increased 13% because of the um, extra copies of the casein there. Uh, not only it makes the milk more nutritious because the percentage of protein in the milk is increased. For example, I don't know the exact value, but let's suppose if the if the percentage of protein in the milk is 5%, now it is like 7% or 8%. But it also allowed to make more cheese because of the presence of more proteins. So that milk uh, is, is under review. I think it is approved. I don't know. I want you guys to please double check this information and help me to update the slide. Because the FDA will need to know a lot of things before it will going to approve a transgene product. There are certain things they are looking at which are short term and there are certain other things they are looking at which are long term. So once they get all the answers, they can allow their general population to start using uh, that product. The important difference between this thing, the, the good thing about that, uh, that you have inserted a gene into the cow if I can create the I don't know if it's a cow or not, but if it is a cow, we are create we are inserting a gene, external gene, into each and every cell of the cow. But that gene belongs to the cow as well. So nothing is coming from any other species or from outside. It's like the gene is harvested from the cow. It is created out of the cow's genome and then inserted into the cow as well. So this seems to be like more like a safe type of uh, trade or the stuff you are doing, safe business over there. Another very famous transgenic product is the transgenic pig, which express phytase. You can wonder why, it, and that pig is called as Enviro pig. Uh, pig is a commercial commodity in, 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 in most part of the world. It's part of the food as a pork. And uh, it's a very, uh, I must say, uh, what I should say, a major source of protein in, 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 uh, in, in most part of the world. Uh, the, so the pig farming is a very big business out there because the pig products are used, the pork is used in, fo uh, in food items and pig is also utilized for other options as well. So there exists a very big uh, I must say pig farming industry. But the problem with the pig farming industry is that, that uh, the pig, they naturally produce uh, phytic acid. They naturally produce, or, or the, the, sorry, the phytic acid present in the pig meal. Not, they're, they're not producing 
phytic acid naturally the food they are eating the phytic acid present in that food is converted into the phosphorus is converted into phosphorus is degraded and it produces phosphorus which is absorbed by the pig and then released uh, uh, with the along with the undigested food so the pig waste contains lots of phosphorus so if you are farming if someone is farming uh, pigs a large number of pigs in a certain area that means the pig waste will going to add lots of phosphorus in that land and ultimately that will going to absorb in the in the water and then it will became the part of the water and the lakes and change the proportion and percentage of different things and change the acidity ph and other stuff as well so it was a very big trouble for 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 lots of uh, like european countries and in far east asia uh, because the pig farming is actually creating lot of environmental hazard to that place because their waste contains the phosphorus so they have created the enviro pig in which the pig saliva produces an enzyme called phytase so the phytase is produced is engineered in the cells of the saliva you can ask me a very important question here that the pig body is made up of trillions of cells when you inject the gene which produces phytase so this is the gene which produces the phytase when you inject that gene into the zygote that zygote will going to develop into an organism so that phytase gene will going to be part of every cell but what i am telling you that it is only express or active it is only express or active in the salivary glands of the pig not in the other parts of the body not in the not in the heart not in the brain not in the legs it's only expressed in the salivary glands of the pig so that's a very important tricky good research question how people made it possible to help in a situation where they want where how people make this thing possible that a certain gene should only express in one type of tissue this thing is called as tissue specific gene expression this thing is called as tissue specific gene expression and that is possible because of the tissue specific promoter so when they create the cassette for the phytase gene they create the coding sequence of the phytase and they incorporate a tissue specific promoter they create a tissue specific promoter i wish you should keep this thing in your head for a longer period of time a tissue specific promoter is a promoter which get activated in within a certain tissue because it act, get activated with certain environment and that is why it allows the expression of one particular gene in one particular tissue if this tissue specific promoter belongs to the liver in that case if this belongs to the liver whatever the gene is there will going to express in the liver only if that tissue specific promoter belongs to the salivary glands then that gene will going to be expressed only in the saliva that does not mean that gene is not present in the other cells that cassette is present in each and every cell of the pig but because the environment is not salivary gland here so the promoter is not activated the promoter is not activated here not act so that gene will not be expressed the gene will only be expressed here because the promoter is salivary gland specific and that got, got activated here 
messenger RNA and then the proteins and that phytase which become part of the food and phytase then help in the digestion of the phytic acid that help that phosphorus compounds and then break down those phosphorus compounds and consumed uh, by, by the pig not released as a phosphorus to the environment that actually decrease the pollution so the government and other companies they encourage their farmers to buy this enviro pig for the cattle farming for the pig farming because when they raise this pig engineered pig that will not going to hurt the environment ji abir aap ne koi question puchna sir does the excessive phosphorus not harm the pig or the humans who eat it no 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 in this case not in this case but of course like every other food like when there are goods and bads are present and associated with different types of foods so the pig meat has a different uh, goods and bads and of course phosphorus the presence of phosphorus is not a healthier thing in the meat the naturally normally the poor, the pig is supposed to eject the phosphorus compounds does not allow to stay within the body because they do not know how to metabolize it मैं आपको इसकी एग्जाम्पल देता हूं हम जब हरी सब्जियां खाते हैं ग्रीन वेजिटेबल्स एंड फ्रूट्स एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स दे कंटेन सेलुलेस सॉरी सेलुलोस दे कंटेन सेलुलोस वी डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू विद द सेलुलोस द सेलुलोस गोस एंड देन गो आउट इट हेल्प्स इन द बाउल मूवमेंट दो बट वी डोंट हैव एनी एंजाइम व्हिच कैन डाइजेस्ट द सेलुलोस सो इट्स लाइक अ यूजलेस थिंग ऑफ कोर्स इट इज इन्वॉल्व इन द फूड मूवमेंट but not as a nutrition not as something which has a nutritive value same goes for the the phosphorus compounds are supposed to be ejected into the uh, environment but having phytase in the system will help those phosphorus compounds to be metabolized and can be used by the pig and does not go out to the system but that's a good point that accumulation of phosphorus compound is not nice but the products in ositol and other things which are produced out of the phytase activity they are somehow acceptable and that is why it is um, used of course there are people who who are objecting on all sorts of genetically modified organism and they are objecting to this thing as well but what if it is causing big trouble in the environment so you can reduce the problems here somehow so the next is the transgenic fish that's important interesting we but we should like it we should uh, be happy to see this thing the transgenic fish especially trout i mean these are very expensive things salmon and trout i mean i don't know I mean, trout ko maine nahi try kiya you guys might uh, know the taste of the trout when you go to nalan kagan and the northern areas but salmon is like is amazing and the fish they are very expensive uh, i must say cash products and uh, um, the transgenic fish it can grow six times faster i mean imagine it's like six times more business six times more meat and that will going to make uh, the farmer a very rich guy as compared to the person who is growing the wild type fish six time too much earning 1 rupees versus earning 6 rupees the big difference so the reason why that fish is able to grow six times more because they have an extra copy of the growth hormone now the growth hormone is something uh, which should be produced over the period of a time in 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 the life of the fish and that is under the control of a certain promoter as well the growth hormone hormone is not something which is supposed to be produced like should not be over expressed it's a gradual production of growth hormone over a period of a reasonable amount of time that overall define how much that organism will grow how much big that thing is humans mein jinka growth hormone acche se grow nahi karta produce nahi karta express nahi hota they usually stay like uh, smaller as compared to the normal people and sometimes the growth hormones got activated started producing like um, 
overproduction of uh, the growth hormone and that actually affect the overall growth the size of the body of the organism so that so so to look at the difference the wild type versus uh, the the transgene multiple copies of growth hormones are here so like if there is one copy of growth hormone here so there might be like several copies three or four let's suppose three copies of the growth hormone here so it changes the overall size of the organism it increases the skeleton and the mass so we eventually able to get like a bigger fish uh, gab aap a question sir is it possible to get irregular uh, expression like in some areas it expresses itself while in others it's slow to express no 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 it's not actually related to growth hormones are uh, controlled by multiple factors and uh, one of the factor is the hormone producing cells and uh, did you remember the the it uh, there is a thing present in the in the neck uh, which produces a hormone thyroid thyroid and that requires uh, idothyroxin and the term and the name idothyroxin means that you should have iodine in your food if you have iodine in your food that is the only source that you able to create your idothyroxin properly now those hormones are further controlled by the pituitary gland that's a different story but many hormones are not controlled by one simple direct factors especially the growth hormones because they have to do a very special job so in different areas because of the difference in the you know components present in the nutrition especially the micronutrients not the mic because the mic not the protein carbohydrate fats i am talking about the micronutrients and the vitamins the different the difference is there in the growth hormones but we want our kids to be stronger and they should grow more as well lekin abhi tak humans ke sath ye nahi kiya humne fish ke sath kar liye so growth hormone gene is utilized a lot by human race to create bigger you know bigger animals to get more food to get more meat out of it so growth hormone as if you know is produced by the anterior loop of the pituitary gland pituitary gland and plays a vital role stimulating the overall growth of the cell its molecular weight is about 22 kg dalton and the transgenic fish it carries an extra copy of the gene actually it is created in this way that uh, the gene sequence of uh, the growth hormone uh, is utilized to create a a copy a double stranded dna or i must say the cdna and that's cdna of the growth hormone so this is the gene this is the growth hormone gene sequence the double stranded dna or the cdna is created inserted into a plasmid and that is a plasmid this is a multi cloning site where that cassette is inserted and then that plasmid is injected where into the egg of the fish assuming that the plas egg uh, uh, fertilize egg or even the eggs okay eggs or fertilize eggs that plasmid is then allowed to incorporate with the help of experimental techniques and we are assuming that this plasmid is going to incorporate into the genome of the fish and that can be done using retroviruses and other techniques as well so once these genes are incorporated the fish the product the product fish that will going to be bigger that will be bigger in size and bigger in growth now this fish is a transgene i want you to understand this is not normal situation this is not a normal situation this is weird you have changed the genome of an organism and that change if occur naturally might take like several million years and we have changed the genome like uh, in few experiments that fish is a different fish as compared to the normal or i must say as compared to the wild type fish 
if you allow that transgene fish with an extra growth hormone to go outside the farm and become part of the wild, become part of the nature, that will going to outnumber the wild type. That will not allow the wild type to survive in the wild because they will going to consume more food. They are bigger, they are stronger. So that will going to survive. It's a very, very big question marks on the transgenes that we are in no position to allow the transgenes to become part of the nature, to become, to go wild. Because that will going to destroy the ecosystem. That will going to change the ecosystem a lot. Hope you are getting this interesting information. So we are doing more things than just putting the growth hormones. We are giving them some disease resistant genes as well. So um, uh, some fish, if they are not very strong in their immune system, they are more prone to disease and they will not going to grow enough. So not only giving them the growth hormone, but also making them more stronger in terms of their immune system. Adding more genes like lysozyme is a gene. It's a, actually a gene which can kill the bacteria. So if as a, as a fish farmer, you came to know that the bacterial contamination is a real threat to the fish in the system, in the pond, then such fish with the lysozyme gene incorporated will going to have a better chance of survival in that pond. So it's a very wonderful business ideas, making a fish stronger and better. Sometimes the transgene fish, uh, they are genetically engineered to grow more like adding the growth hormone. The FDA needs to know, needs to know a lot of things before allowing this thing to be used generally by general population. Sometimes people are inserting the biosensors to, to get the reading of the things present in the environment. So they have uh, created a GFP. This is the GFP gene, coding sequence of the GFP gene. Of course, this thing is placed initially into a plasmid. This is part of the plasmid, which was used. So they have created the GFP under the control of a promoter, under the control of a promoter. And that promoter is controlled by estrogen. So what that mean, if the estrogen is there in the system, in the presence of the estrogen, that promoter will get activated. Once the promoter get activated, that means it will recruit the RNA pole two, and then it will start the transcription of that gene, whatever the hell of the gene present over there. And that gene is what? That gene is the GFP, green fluorescent protein. In the UV, it will glow like a green color. So let's suppose if there is a contamination of estrogen is there in the system, in the pool, in the lake. So what will happen? Such fish which are carrying the GFP gene under the control of estrogen inducible promoter. So what will happen in the presence of the estrogen the genes of the GFP will be activated and will be transcribed to produce messenger RNA, means to produce the protein, and that protein will glow in green color. The fish will glow green if the estrogen is there. So it's a very interesting way to find the presence of a certain thing, to sense the certain thing. It's called biosensing, pollution of estrogen. But you can try other things as well. A very famous example is came from uh, a thing called the pout. And uh, it has used the antifreeze protein. And I will share the story after the break. Okay. Okay. So 
इन्होंने ट्रांसिन कैसे बनाया तो फर्स्ट थिंग यू नीड टू नो दिस ट्रांसिन दिस इज नॉट द वन आई थिंक दिस इज नॉट दैट थिंग दिस इज नॉट दैट थिंग यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज इस दिस इज दिस ट्रांसिन इज क्रिएटेड फॉर फिश दे वॉन्ट द फिश टू ग्रो मोर देन नॉर्मली फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द स्टोरी बिहाइंड दैट एक्सपेरिमेंट naturally fish do not grow uh equally in the same rate in all seasons they usually grow in the summers and uh, during the winters when temperatures goes down they do not grow at that time their size stays same so what that mean uh, this is the baby fish so in the summer it will be like a bigger fish then in the winter it will going to stay like the same size and then in the summers it will become bigger that is how it grows like this in the summers not in the winters so there is no grow growth in the fish meat in the size of the fish in this period and that is the research trouble and a business idea that the fish is taking more time to grow to a reasonable size which can be used to harvest and to earn money so is there any way that we can push this fish to grow and to keep growing irrespective of the temperature or forever the problem comes in the winter in the winter they do not grow the growth hormone does not produce enough okay so that's a, that's the research question comes from the industry side now how life sciences respond to that the answer is associated with the protein called antifreeze protein it's a very famous i want you to 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 google and study this thing it's a very interesting thing it was discovered something somewhere in 2010 or 9 maybe you might a, a, another very famous thing crystalline that might be the name of the protein please google it to confirm okay aur aapne suna hoga you might heard that there was an animal out there in the in the in the in the north side of the world it lives in in beneath the ice when temperature goes down the animal freezes and become dead technically the story started from the discovery of the crystalline the crystalline is the protein which helps an organism to exist to survive even in the very harshest of the environment when temperatures goes down below like minus 50 60 or minus 100 the body of that organism freezes and the protein crystalline allows that organism to stay stay alive even at that temperature even in the freezing condition if you touch that organism it will like like a like the like ice frozen solid like ice but if you increase the temperature of the environment and when the summers come the dead dead organism will start walking once again it was a very miraculous discovery of that time i think it was very famous discovery just google and and study the story to find the exact details but scientists were started following that what is the special thing which allows that organism to exist does not degrade the structures and the protein things and the heart and the blood and all the wonderful enzymes how they able to survive even when the body is frozen so crystalline is the answer the crystalline allows the proteins to freeze in a way without degradation without denaturation and when temperature increases the frozen proteins will started converting into the active power once again and give life to the frozen animal and the organism okay 
There are other animals who, you, who are supposed to live at a very low temperatures in Arctic and in other regions, very low, low temperature. Natures give them a certain special promoters which got activated at low temperature. So, uh, pout, ocean pout is the example. That organism usually lives at a very low temperature. So, it is required to express certain genes at the low temperature. So nature give them a promoter, ocean power promoter. What is the special thing in that promoter region? That this promoter got activated when the temperature is very low. So at a lower temperature, that ocean pout promoter got activated. It's the same thing which I shared in an earlier slide in case of the glowing fish. There it was in estrogen inducible promoter and here it is like a temperature inducible promoter but when the temperature becomes low. So it is not the antifreeze protein remember it is the promoter of the antifreeze protein. The antifreeze protein of the pout is required to produce protein when, when the temperature goes down. So it is controlled by a promoter which got activated at low temperatures. That's the story. This is, this is normal and natural. So at low temperatures, the promoter got activated, started producing antifreeze protein, and it helps the organism to live and survive in those harshest of the conditions. So what scientists have done, they extracted this thing. Remember, not the antifreeze protein, but the promoter region. So this is the promoter region, which can get activated at low temperature. And then placed upstream of the growth hormone. This is the Solomon. Salmon growth hormone, CDNA. This is the growth hormone gene of the salmon. Now, the growth hormone gene of the salmon is under the control of an ocean pout promoter, is under the control of an inducible promoter, and that promoter is induced at low temperature. So, from here to onwards, this is like the growth hormone gene of salmon. And then this is the ocean power promoter downstream region, three prime region, and this is the five prime region. So this cassette, when incorporated into the fish and creates a transgene, that fish will grow in summer? The answer is yes. But when in winters, what happens? What happens? So this is the start of the fish in the summers. The fish will grow. What about in the winters? In the winters, when the temperatures goes down, the ocean pout promoter will get activated. And what is present downstream? Downstream is present the growth hormone. So it will start producing the growth hormone. So here, in this case, the growth hormone is, will not produce during the winter. But in the transgene, the growth hormone will produce in the winters as well. It will kept on growing in the winter because in the winter, the growth hormone will produce from the ocean power promoter because at low temperature, it gets activated. In summers, the growth hormone comes naturally. In winters, it comes from here. So that salmon will going to grow throughout the year. And that will be very big. You can say it's a very, very big salmon as compared to the natural salmon helps the economy and then make people rich. But there are quite concerns. I'm just concluding quite concerns. And I have shared that they are, I say they are, they are like grown, genetically engineered. If they go and escape into the wild, it will going to change. It will going to hurt the course of evolution. It will going to affect the ecosystem and it will going to make a huge difference in the ecosystem of that portion. Because okay, these are counterparts, these comparative, which are 
फिश उनसे स्ट्रॉगर होंगे दे एबल टू लिव लॉन्गर स्ट्रॉगर उनको आउट नंबर कर देंगे एंड दैट विल गोइंग टू चेंज द इकोनॉमी इकोसिस्टम अलाउट ओके शिव